Iran is in the uh, headlines, um, as it has been for now a week since Israel bombed the Iranian embassy <coughs> in Syria. Iran has been threatening um, uh, to attack. Israel has responded by saying that if Iran attacks um, from Iran, which is a weird, a weird kind of, uh, um, it just shows again Israeli weakness and meekness. Uh, Israel said if Iran attacks from Iran, that is if Iran launches missiles, from Iranian territory that hit Israel or target Israel, Israel will attack Iran proper, implying that if Iran doesn't attack from Iran, that is, if it uses its proxies, um, uh, but, it, but clearly its proxies, right, doing its bidding, uh, and they attack from Syria and Lebanon and uh, Yemen and Iraq, then Israel won't attack Iran, which is bizarre and wrong, and weak, and, 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 you know, and just horrible. It, you know, Israel should have attacked Iran a long time ago. It should have taken out its nuclear program. Uh, all indications now are that Iran is, uh, with the heightened tensions with Israel, is uh, invigorating its nuclear program uh, and, and could be very close uh, to developing a nuclear bomb. Uh, this would be, of course, a, a major cat catastrophe and a disaster. Uh, it, it, it also... Um, so why, why is Israel not going to attack Iran? I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity to attack Iran, to attack its nuclear facilities, to take them down a notch, to weaken them substantially, to weaken their influence in the Middle East, to weaken their influence on all these so-called proxies. And, and, you know, if we're going to have any peace in the Middle East, the Iranian regime has to go or the Iranian regime has to be neutered in one way or the other. And this is an opportunity for the Israel to do that. And uh, it seems like even with this, they will only do it if the Iranians attack from Iranian soil, which is if that is significant. It does seem like um, uh, Iran is, uh, scheduled, is likely to attack Israel at any time now, any moment. It does seem like Israel is braced for this, as is the United States. Um, Diplomatic uh, missions all over Israel are getting instructions from their home offices on uh, preparing, and uh, the preps are for a disaster, for, for taking out the electricity grid and taking out um, cell phones. Uh, but I expect, uh, anyway, so, uh, so there is a lot of prep going on in Israel right now. Um, uh, you know, the headline in Bloomberg is uh, U.S. sees imminent missile strike on is Israel by Iran and its proxies. Uh, the real fear is, I guess, that they all attack at once, that Israel is overwhelmed from every, uh, from the south, the east, and the north. Uh, and uh, that really tests its missile defense system, and that means some missiles will, will, will get through. Uh, so, uh, there's real fear, I think, right now um, in Israel. I think there's real fear uh, that, uh, that Iran will take this opportunity to really try to cripple um, Israel. Now, I, I have a different take on this, and of course we'll find out what the truth is soon enough. Uh, I think in the end the Iranians will launch something pretty mild. Uh, I don't think Iran wants a war with Israel. I don't think Iran wants a war that might I I I cause the United States to enter. I think the Iranian regime is weak from the inside. I also don't think um, I, I don't think Hezbollah right now wants a war with Israel, even though they, 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 they keep pretending they do, but I don't think they really do. Again, Hezbollah is pretty weak, and it's weak politically within Lebanon. Uh, many Lebanese don't, don't like Hezbollah, don't want Hezbollah, and uh, Lebanon has been a, a kind of a, a state on the brink of, of, of just, just disaster. Uh, for years now, and uh, a war with Hezbollah between Israel and Hezbollah would, would cause Lebanon to collapse, is the fear. Uh, just for those of you not familiar with this, Lebanon, a country uh, which has both Shiite Muslim, um, Shiite Muslim, Sunni Muslims, Christians, Druze, has a, a pretty diverse population in terms of religion. It's a, it's a country that has been um, inflicted with instability, really, since the, really, since the early 1970s when Palestinian refugees were kicked out of Jordan and settled in uh, Lebanon and immediately, 
immediately uh, started fermenting a civil war there. And there was a, a civil war which pitted them, the Shiites and against the Sunnis, the Sunnis against the Shiites, both of them against the Christians, and everybody against the Jews, but alliance kept on changing. A, a brutal civil war, which was horrific, which ended in the 1980s, but never really ended in that uh, violence and tension and, and uh, uh, continued in Lebanon and continues in Lebanon, uh, political instability. Many of the Christians, uh, the Christian Lebanese, over the last 60 years have left uh, Lebanon and, and sought greener pastures uh, in uh, South America. There are lots of Lebanese in, in uh, very wealthy, successful Lebanese families in Mexico, in uh, Brazil, in, uh, in, uh, in other parts of uh, in Colombia and other parts of, of, um, of Latin America. They've also gone to the U.S. They've gone to Europe. Uh, uh, so the Lebanese, remember Lebanon, pre the early 1970s was thought of, was talked about as the Paris of the Middle East. It was a beautiful, beautiful city. I, 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 I was in Beirut in 1982. It, it, it was pretty devastated when I was there. It was pretty, uh, it, this was uh, at post uh, civil war and post war with Israel. And, the, and the, the city was in shambles. And yet in spite of the fact that it was in shambles, you could still see how beautiful a city it was and, uh, and, and all the stories of how vibrant a culture it was, how vibrant a nightlife there was. It, it was just a, it was a secular, beautiful, amazing city. It is not anymore. It is, it is, a, it, it is a sad, very, very sad city, a testament to what happens when, uh, when tribalism uh, dominates, when violence dominates, when hatred dominates. And, of course, the one party within... Lebanon that has only grown in power over the years, particularly as Christians have left and even some Sunni Muslims have left, is Hezbollah, which represents the Shiites. And the reason they have grown in power is because they are supported by Iran. So they have a constant flow of funding in and they have built weapons. They have supposedly 130,000 130, missiles aimed at Israel, ready for launch. Um, and they are also a, a, a very experienced military force. They have fought in the Syrian civil war for, for a decade now. And they, of course, have fought against Israel on occasion. So we're talking about an experienced, uh, and, and they have, many of them have received training in Iran and, uh, and, and have seen combat. So we're talking about an experienced uh, uh, military group uh, with fighters with experience. Uh, so Hezbollah is a, is, a, is a significant force, I think a, a more significant force than Hamas is. And uh, they are, um, anyway, Hezbollah is, is one of those proxies that could very well uh, attack, uh, attack Israel. So Israel's on high alert. Um, uh, Israel, of course, is threatening back a powerful response on Iran's territory if it's attacked. Um, and uh, so there was a, uh, a, a, there's a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee about an hour ago uh, made a post regarding Iran's imminent attack against Israel. Uh, you know, this is a Republican senator, Tom Cotton. Uh, he wrote, uh, and, and uh, sec guaranteeing America's full support. You've also seen statements coming out of the White House saying that in spite of disagreements, if Iran attacks Israel, uh, I I America will, will provide Israel with its full support. Uh, you're also seeing uh, leaders of uh, Saudi Arabia and many of the Gulf states calling the Iranians and trying to get them to stand down. The German foreign minister uh, was on a phone call with the Iranian foreign minister trying to tell him to stand down and explaining to him that Germany would stand uh, with Israel. Uh, I mean, Iran attacking Israel would be a massive miscalculation for Iran. It would set it back dramatically. Um, according to Channel 14 in Israel, um, the latest assessment of Israeli intelligence suggests that the Iranian retaliatory attack will occur any day now. And it is the first, in its first phase, will consist of dozens of missiles launched from forces in Iran, Iraq, and Yemen though the participation of Hezbollah and other Iran-backed groups is still unknown. So again, um, it looks like it could happen any minute now, any day now. 
Um, it will be interesting to see if Iran itself, its Republican, its uh, Revolutionary Guards participate or just proxies. Whether Hezbollah participates. Hezbollah, without a doubt, Hezbollah is the one entity that can do the most damage to Israel. I think that uh, missiles launched from Iran uh, provide Israel with uh, plenty of warning. Um, it, they take a while to get to Israel. They can be shot down by airplanes. They can be shot down by missile defense systems. Uh, Israel now has a squadron of F, uh, I think F-35s in the air 24-7. So they are rotating a squadron in the air 24-7. Uh, its entire Air Force is on, in a sense, red alert. Uh, it, it could be, uh, it's, the majority of its airplanes could be in the air in a matter of uh, 10 minutes. Uh, that would give them plenty of uh, ability if, they, if airfields are targeted to get airplanes in the air before the airfield is struck. If the airfields will be struck, I think most of them will be shot down. And, of course, uh, to launch either a counterattack or to, or to uh, help um, uh, you know, shoot down the missiles, the ballistic missiles that are being targeted in Israel. So uh, Israel's in a major state of alert. The army is in a major state of alert. Civil defense is in a major state of alert. Again, it is rotating a uh, rotating a, uh, a squadron um, in uh, in the air uh, constantly. Um, so uh, that is uh, that is just a quick update on Israel. At the same time, uh, it, this morning Israel launched a major operation in the center of Gaza uh, on one of the refugee camps that it had not yet entered. Uh, it had intelligence that Hamas uh, was uh, Hamas had many fighters there. There were still tunnels there that they had not destroyed, um, and uh, they, had, uh, they were entering, as of very early this morning, they were entering that uh, camp, uh, uh, killing uh, Hamas fighters and, and destroying the tunnel systems there. So there's fighting on the ground occurring right now. Again, my, my, my thoughts go to the young kids who are fighting to defend their lives against the barbarians. All right. Um, just one other, uh, one other related issue that relates here to, um, uh, uh, to uh, the war, but, but is directly related to uh, what's going on in the U.S. Um, in, uh, in, uh, yesterday, I guess, in one of the pro-Hamas demonstrations in Michigan, uh, protesters uh, chanted, Death to Israel, well, they do that all the time. That's nothing new, but they added a chant, and they're becoming bolder, death to America. They were chanting death to America, death to America. These are Arabs living in America. Uh, I wonder how many of them are going to go back uh, to where they came from uh, as, a, as a consequence of this. Um, uh, so uh, uh, death to America chants in Michigan uh, today. Uh, the Congresswomen from that district in Michigan, Representative Rashida Tlaib, we know Rashida Tlaib pretty well, uh, was asked to condemn uh, the chance of death to America. She instead had a complete meltdown in front of the camera, refused to condemn the chance, uh, and, uh, and resisted condemning him. I, I, I think this is, God, I mean, it is pretty amazing that both Democratic Party and Republican Party are committed to imploding. They, they both are trying to alienate as many voters as they can. Uh, and uh, if, if, the, if, if a representative in Congress is not willing to condemn chance to death to America, uh, it, it, is, it is hard to see how her political party is going to be successful. Uh, you know, it is likely that uh, uh, Jews, uh, or, or not just Jews, generally supporters of Israel, are going to have a very hard time voting for Democratic Party whose representatives uh, are not only willing to stand by calls for the destruction of Israel, but also now uh, willing to stand by and not condemn calls for the destruction of Israel. And at the same time, you've got a Republican Party that is imploding over, um, among many things over the issue, well, two issues, I'd say, uh, imploding the Republican Party. One is incompetence, just sheer straightforward incompetence, uh, uh, you know, whether it's nominating really, really horrible people to run for office or whether it's what's happening in the House of Representatives and how totally incompetent the Republican majority is in ha handling their affairs there. Um, and then, of course, the second issue is abortion, which is, which is just unbelievably destructive.
the Republican Party right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, uh, there you have it. Uh, Death to America is now a chant in Michigan. Uh, you know.